Well, welcome. We're glad that you've come out to be with us on this Wednesday for our Wednesday Word and our time together here. Um, get your cup of coffee or a cup of tea. Uh, today, uh, the tea I'm, I'm drinking is it's a floral tea uh, from Paris, um, so I can't pronounce the name of it, but that's what I've got going. So get, get your drink, and then most importantly, get your Bible out so we can just spend these few moments um, around God's Word. All right, let's pray. Father, I just pray now that you would open our minds and our hearts to all that you want to say to us, that you would speak from the very Word of God uh, right to where we live, right to where we're at. Uh, God, that you might meet those needs today. In the blessed name of Christ, I pray. Amen. All right, so we're going to stay in Psalms for a while. And so turn to Psalm 146. Psalm 146 there. Um, and he starts off there in his first two verses. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord with all my life. I will sing praise to my God as long as I live. So he starts off this, and it's kind of one of these that's bracketed by hallelujah or praise that we, we have in the Psalms here. These several Psalms are like that at the end of, our, of, of the Psaltery. But we have that here, and he says, well, what are we to do? We're to praise the Lord. Uh, when? When do you praise the Lord? Is there when? You know, the thing about when is we can do it anytime, can't we? It doesn't have to be a set time, and that's great for corporate worship, but we can praise the Lord anytime. So praise Him when? When? Where? Wherever. You know, you can praise Him driving in your car, you know, you turn up uh, some Christian music, or you're just got the music off and you're just praying and, and thanking God and praising Him and worshiping Him. So we can praise the God, uh, praise God whenever or wherever. But then he says who, and I wanted to focus there for just a moment when he says, oh my soul, my very self, uh, my whole being is to be involved in praise. Not just uh, words I'm saying or thoughts that I'm thinking, but my whole total being is to be in praise. And then he says, for how long? And I love it how he says here, all my life. And then he says, and I will sing praise to God, but as long as I live. And nobody knows how long we're going to live, do we? We don't know. Some of you may live for another 75 years or more, but some of us may not live much longer. I don't know. We don't know how long we're going to live. Life can be very short or it can be very long. So the point is don't waste the time. Don't waste the time that God has given you on things that really don't matter. I'm going to kind of touch on that Sunday morning in, in uh, our time together. But don't waste time. You know, God has given you this time right now. And one of the things we can certainly do is worship Him. Is we can check our priorities and, and, and don't waste it. So the psalmist is talking here. He's praising the God. He's going to do that all the days of his life as long as he lives. Then verse 3 and 4. Do not put your trust in princes, in mortal men who cannot save. When their spirit departs, they return to the ground, and that very day their plans come to nothing. So he's saying here, um, these people at the time would often look to others, and they would look to the princes. And, and a prince didn't have to be one of royalty here. It could be someone um, that had a lot of power. Maybe uh, someone had a lot of money. A lot of power, a lot of juice, a lot of influence, people of wealth, people of, of statue. And he says, you know, don't, don't look to just to look, look to them. Sometimes we do that, don't we? We look to people to solve the problems. We look to people or to uh, governments or they would look to the armies and the chariots. And he says, no, don't look to that because that won't make it. That won't get it. He says, they're just mortals. And when they die, their plans die with them. So it just comes to naught. So don't just look there. And then he goes on, and, and so he gives us where to go then. Blessed or happy is he whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord his God, the maker of heaven and earth, the sea and everything in them, the Lord who remains faithful forever. Um, no matter who you are, there are times you need help. doesn't matter who you are. Everybody needs help sometime. Um, 
on the bottom of our of the uh, email that came out of, or on the happenings when we do the parkland happenings on the parkland happenings on the bottom there's some names and phone numbers and you can call those phone numbers and, and know, that person will try to get you some assistance whether they can meet that need or they'll find someone who can help to meet that need or they're trying to put you in contact with someone but those numbers are there to help and, and to try to meet some of the needs that that maybe you have um, but it doesn't matter who you call or how hard they try, there'll be times that they fail. They, they, they just, they'll let you down. You ever had somebody let you down? Somebody thought you could really count on? Well, sometimes they let you down because they just don't want, they don't care anymore. But sometimes they're really trying. They really are. But they just can't get it done. Or they forget about it. People, there'll be times people will let you down. That's just the way it is. But the good news here is God will never fail you. God will never, ever let you down. You can trust him, folks. Now, those people and names that, that I was telling you about on that um, Parkland Happening and other friends you have, they won't let you down very often. And they're going to do their best. But there are times they will because they're mortal. They're just people. We make mistakes, but God never does, and he won't fail you. And then he says there, look in that verse, it says he's the God of Jacob. Well, Jacob was always needing help, wasn't he? It seems like he was at least. Um, you remember when, when Jacob tricks his dad, you know, puts the hair, makes him seem like he's hairy, you know, puts the skin on there and the lamb's wool. And, and he does, and he tricks his dad, and he has to leave home. I mean, he's got to get out of there in a hurry. And it's a very unfriendly world. And yet, God meets his very needs. Even when Jacob was disobedient, God helped him and makes him the father of the tribes of Israel. Isn't that something? Man, God won't let you down, folks. But you got to go to him. you got to trust him. He is your help. And so you can run to him. In fact, it's in, in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 6. The Lord is my helper. And then, I, I love this part. It's Hebrews 13, 6. The Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can man do to me? He said, God's my helper. I don't have to be afraid. Now, not only does he give you help. Look at verse 5 again with me. Go back to your Bibles. Blessed is he whose help is the God of Jacob, right? But notice this, whose hope is in the Lord his God. So he not only gives us help, but he is our hope. You know, there are times when people feel helpless. You ever feel helpless? You don't know what to do in that situation. You can't handle that problem. Whatever it is, and you just feel helpless. And sometimes people that are that way. And then sometimes we feel hopeless. I don't know where to go. I don't know what to do. And the fact is, right now, um, in this coronavirus day and age in which we're living, some people feel helpless and feel maybe hopeless. Not seeing when it's going to completely dissipate, go away, or how that's going to happen. And there's that sense of we're out of control ourselves, and, and we don't like that feeling. And so there's a sense of hopelessness or helplessness for some people. But when you know the Lord Jesus Christ, you always have hope. You see, he is our hope. Our hope's not in circumstances. It's not in I think things are going to get better or I can think my way out of this or I can connive this. No, our hope is in the living Lord Jesus. Again, um, going back to Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 6, verse 19. We have this hope as an anchor for the soul firm and secure. Isn't that great? Our hope is our anchor. It holds fast. I remember um, there was a time when Marsh and I were diving. We were scuba diving down in the Keys years ago. I think our mom might have been with us. I'm not sure. But anyway, we're out there and we couldn't have, they didn't have the buoys, the buoys to tie up to at the time. And we were off a reef a, a little ways. And, and so we, we dropped anchor there. And so we got our gear on, and, and we went in, and so we were down there for a while, and 
just having a good time looking at the fish and you know the coral and all the sea life. It was about time for us to come up and it was looking like a maybe storm. It was kind of dark when you looked up, it was getting a little bit dark. So we came up and the boat had drifted well, at least a hundred yards from where we had it. The anchor just it broke loose of where it was and it just kind of was dragging along the bottom some. Well, the good news here is the anchor, as it says here, we have this hope as an anchor for our soul. That anchor will never slip. When we anchor our life in the living Lord Jesus Christ, he is our hope, and that hope will never slip. It holds fast. That's just a beautiful picture there. And then he goes on, he says, and he's our creator. I mean, he's the one who made heaven and earth. And if he did that, he can surely steer us along the path or guide our course through whatever we face. And then he says in that same verse, and he is faithful to his promises. He is faithful. He doesn't just try hard. He is faithful to all the promises that the word of God gives you and I. Because our hope in Christ, you see, is based upon his very word, the word of God. Now, I've been told that Magellan took 35 compasses with him when he set out to go around the world. 35 compasses that he took with him. Well, God's word here is our compass to guide us. That's the living word you see, the Lord Jesus and the written word, the scripture, the very word of God. Well, he goes on in verse 7 and 8. He upholds the cause of the oppressed, gives food to the hungry, the Lord sets prisoners free. The Lord gives sight to the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. But that sounds like uh, Isaiah, doesn't it? Or sound like Jesus when he went in there and he looks up the scroll and he reads Isaiah and says, today you, this has been fulfilled. You see, God's not a respecter of persons. You can't bribe the judge here. You can't get out of it just because you have some influence or you have money or you don't have. He's not a respecter of persons. And notice who it says that he helps the oppressed and he sets the prisoner free. Wow. Think of that in New Testament thinking, how Jesus sets us free from the bondage to sin. The Bible says without Christ, we're in bondage to sin. We don't even know it. Or maybe you do know it. But Christ can set us free. So John 8, 36. So if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. You're set free through Christ. He sets the prisoners free. He set you and I free that we might praise him and worship and find an abundant life and have a right relationship with the Holy God. See, that's through Christ. He consoles. He comforts. Who? It says the hurting, those that are marginalized. People all around us that are struggling. And he said, I'll be their strength. I'll be their comfort. I'll be what they need. And then he goes on in verse 9. And he says, The Lord watches over the alien and sustains the fatherless and the widow. Look at those words, those words again with me. The Lord watches over who? The alien. He sustains the fatherless, the widow. What does that say to us today? If that's the heartbeat of God, what should that say to us and how we see folks that are marginalized or kind of forgotten sometimes by society or pushed to the side? Have God a great love and compassion. And I think that speaks to us as individuals and us as a church. And then he goes on there, and this is kind of interesting, the second part of verse 9. But he frustrates the ways of the wicked. Um, you remember the story of Joseph and his brothers and how they were going to do all this wickedness to him, and, you know, and they did. They beat him up, they throw him down, they sell him off, and all the things that. But God does something out of that, and he redeems that. Joseph's character stays true to who he is. God redeems that situation, and he brings Israel back, or saves them from famine, brings them to Egypt, takes care of them. Think of um, the story of Esther and Haman and all the wickedness of Haman and how he tries to kill off all the Jews and try, and he ends up being hung on the gallows. 
See, God frustrates the ways of the wicked. And then he finishes up there in verse 10. And the Lord reigns forever, your God, O Zion, for all generations. Praise the Lord. His kingdom can never come to an end. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. That's his kingdom that you and I will be part of. We are part of now, but one day we'll be with him forever. And a new heaven and a new earth. With great joy and great praise. So let me end with this today. What, I want you to think for, for a moment though. What is your need right now? What is your need today? Is it for um, a physical touch? Is it for some clarity and some decision making? What, what, is, what is your need today? Maybe you're struggling with some tough feelings. Maybe loneliness or, or maybe it, it's the um, coronavirus that's got you kind of on edge and there's a lot of anxiety and you're fearful there. You know, what is the need that you have right now? And don't worry about anybody else. And, and you're just talking to you and God on this one. So, you know, oh, I'll be embarrassed if anybody knows this. No, you just share it with God. And I want to take you back to verse 5 just to read it. Blessed is he whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord his God. Maybe you want to underline that verse 5. Maybe that's a good one for you to memorize. But no matter what your need is today, God is faithful and he can meet that need. He loves you. Let's praise him. Pray with me. Father, thank you for this. And may we have lives that bring glory to you and bring praise to your name. Lord, we have so much to be thankful for. God, that you love us so much, that Jesus, you died on the cross, from you dead, buried, you rose from the grave, and you live today. You're the God of all hope, and our hope and our trust and our faith is in you and you alone. So I pray right now, Lord, that if there's someone that's struggling, that you would encourage their heart right now. God, be a blessing to them, and, and may they be encouraged, and may they start to think on the good things and start to spend some time praising and talking and getting to know you better throughout this day. Lord Jesus, we love you. We thank you that your word is precious to us, and it is true, and you are faithful. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Don't forget, you might want to go ahead and look at our prayer list that's on the happenings there, and pray for those folks as well. God bless.